If you haven't done so, you make sure you pause the video and try to answer this question first on your own before listening on. In part A, we are asked to determine how much work must be done to stop this 32 kilogram wheel. And we know that for rotating bodies, there's a special form of the work kinetic energy theorem. Let's take a look at that theorem. So this theorem states that the work done in order to stop the wheel is equal to essentially its change in kinetic energy, the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. Now this is a rotating body, so when we use the kinetic energy equations, we're not going to be using the typical one half times mass times speed squared. What we're going to use is one half times the rotational inertia times the angular speed squared. It's a very similar equation to the traditional kinetic energy formula, but because it's a rotating body, we have to modify it just a little bit. Now, the question notes that eventually this thin hoop will be brought to a stop, and that means that its final angular speed will equal zero radians per second. Now, of course, if we plug in zero radians per second right here, we're going to have zero squared times all of these terms, and that's just going to go to zero. So this is basically zero minus the initial rotational kinetic energy. And of course, we can drop that zero. We can now turn to this letter I in the equation, which stands for the rotational inertia. Your textbook should have a table that gives the rotational inertias of various bodies that are rotating about a particular axis. Now, in this question, we are told that this wheel is essentially a thin hoop. So we could go to the table in our textbook and look up the rotational inertia for a th thin hoop. And we would see that it's equal to the mass of the hoop times its radius squared. So we're going to be filling in for the rotational inertia, the letter I, this mass times radius squared. And then we come to the initial angular velocity. Now that's given to us in a non-standard unit of 280 revolutions per minute. And we're going to have to change that into the standard unit of radians per second. And so we're going to do a little bit of a conversion here. We know, for example, that one revolution is equal to two pi radians. And so if we set up this conversion, the revolutions are going to cancel. That gives us radians per minute. We want radians per second, so we just have to do one more conversion in which we say that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. And of course, then the minutes will cancel out, and that's going to leave us with radians per second. That's the standard unit for the angular speed. We can close off this parenthesis. Don't forget that we're squaring this initial angular speed, so we'll have to put a squared here. And then we can go ahead and plug in the known values for the mass, which was the 32 kilograms. And then we have the radius squared, and that radius was 1.2 meters. So we're going to have 1.2 meters squared, and then the rest of this conversion again. And when we carefully type this into our calculators, we should get about negative 1.98 times 10 to the power of 4, and then the standard unit of work is joules. So this is the correct answer to part A. And then on to part B, which asks us for the required average power. The average power can be computed by simply taking the magnitude of the work that was done on the thin hoop and dividing by the time interval. So we'll just take the absolute value of the work that we just calculated and then we're going to divide by this time interval of 15 seconds. And we end up with about 1.32 times 10 to the power of 3 and the unit there would be joules per second, or if you prefer, you can change joules per second into watts. And so this is the correct answer to part B.